For this week's Your Health segment, we're joined by Dr. Stephen Kavik, surgeon at the University of Maryland Medical Center and associate professor of surgery at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's talk about hernias. There, there are different types of hernias. Yes, hernias are very common. And hernias are really basically a hole in the strong connective tissue layer that keeps us together. And so a structure can pass into a space that it doesn't normally occupy. They can occur all over the body. You hear sometimes about a sports hernia. What's yes. that? So a sports hernia is a tear in the ligaments or the strong connective tissues around the inguinal canal or around the region of the groin that tend to occur in young athletes. You hear about the, the term, in, you, you'll say it better than I, inguinal, inguinal? Yes, approximately one out of five men will develop a groin hernia throughout the course of his lifetime. The groin hernias are called inguinal hernias, sometimes less commonly femoral. And those are uh, incredibly common, but ones that we can treat with both laparoscopic as well as traditional surgery techniques. Inguinal. 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 Is there a type of hernia that's more uh, serious than, than others? Well, they all can be potentially serious. Hernias that occur around the belly button, umbilical hernias, can have a high risk of incarceration or having a loop of small bowel that gets stuck in them. We worry about the inguinal hernia also being as a point of incarceration. But there really is no safe hernia that you'd rather have. Do people know if they've got one of these or have one brewing? Most commonly, the hernia presents as an external bulge. It's a lump that you can see. And so when that develops, uh, people tend to go to their regular medical doctor or surgeon where they can be identified as having a hernia. But do you ever see somebody who's been walking around with one for too long and it's, and it's become more complicated? Absolutely. So a lot of times hernias start out very small with minimal symptoms. And as they enlarge over time, they become more debilitating to the patient. How do you prevent them? There's really no great answer to that aside from minimizing abdominal strain. So we encourage people to live healthy, active lifestyles to avoid heavy lifting, uh, moving the furniture, uh, that sort of uh, heavy exercise, and to avoid constipation as well, as that can build up internal pressure. In that scenario, the heavy lifting scenario or the uh, constipation pressure uh, scenario, do, do people report feeling something pop, or is it more subtle than that? It's a very common mechanism where people say that they felt something give or pop and then had a bulge that was reducible or could be pressed back into place. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about hernias, give us a call. The number's up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions. The Twitter address is at MPT News. So you're a surgeon. You can fix them. How do you do that? Well, at the University of Maryland, we specialize in fixing hernias by minimally invasive techniques, or what goes by the name of laparoscopy. Under a traditional repair, we make an incision on the outside push the hernia contents back where they belong, and then close the defect with either stitches or with a reinforcing mesh. With minimally invasive techniques, we use a small camera about the size of a ballpoint pen to come in through the belly button, where we can then use other puncture wounds to reduce from the inside or to pull the hernia back where it belongs. It's actually pretty neat. We can roll up a mesh like a cigarette and introduce it through a small puncture wound so we can get a very large mesh without having to make a very large incision. From the surgeon's perspective, was it easier, faster, the old way? Maybe a little more difficult for the patient. It sounds like the laparoscopy, uh, laparoscopic uh, approach is maybe uh, more complex, more challenging from the surgeon's perspective, but better for the patient. It absolutely requires more technology. It requires the cameras and the fine instrumentation, but patients feel better quicker and that's worthwhile. What's the recovery time like? Generally speaking, we do hernias as same day surgery, that patients come in, have their procedure done, and go home the same day. But we really want the repair to heal. And so whether that's with sutures or with mesh, we want people to give about two weeks before they get back to any sort of serious activity, and preferably four. Do, do these tend to recur if somebody has one at, at one site, is it likely to pop again, or is that person predisposed to maybe having it happen again nearby? 
Well, we do think of some people as hernia formers that may develop multiple hernias, particularly men in the groin. If they develop a hernia on one side, they're likely to develop it at another. Uh, we've talked about men a lot here. Do, do men get hernias more than women? Uh, in terms of the groin, yes. So the men have a spermatic cord that goes through the abdominal wall. So there's a natural opening or a natural point of weakness where hernias may develop. So men are statistically much more likely to develop a hernia in the groin than women. So much of medicine is, is high-tech imaging these days. When a patient comes in with a hernia, do you need any of that, or can you sort of feel what's going on and be sure about it? Well, there's a lot of different types of hernias that we haven't talked about, such as internal hernias, hiatal hernias that occur at the junction of the chest and the belly. Also, they go by the names of parasophageal hernias or diaphragmatic hernias. Those are impossible to detect on clinical exam under normal circumstances. But for umbilical hernias, those at the belly button, and those in the groin, the single best test is a physical exam by an experienced examiner. Let's uh, grab a phone call. Carroll County, this is Larry. Uh, Larry, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Uh, well, hi. Uh, my question is, are hernias inheritable? My grandfather had one and my dad had one. Am I liable to get one? I'm 70 years old. You're, and you're doing well so far. Uh, as far as I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Larry, thanks very much. Well, a lot of people tend to be similar size and shape as their parents or their grandparents, and some of the structural defects that are present in hernias are present in all of us who walk upright. So it's not specifically inheritable, but they do tend to follow families. Is there anything to avoid? Is there any particular uh, sports activity? You, you mentioned heavy lifting. Any, anything else that uh, people uh, unknowingly are hurting themselves and causing these problems? I think that the most common problem is when people start to age and they continue to lift some heavy objects, perhaps do some work around the house, and they don't really consider that to be beyond their abilities, but it can become overwhelming over time. Um, I read there's a link to smoking. Is that a thing? Absolutely. Smoking does a lot of bad things to your health. In particular, it helps the small blood vessels to clamp down. And that can interfere with the ability of the connective tissue to hold its integrity or to heal after a hernia repair. Let's take a call. Uh, Sussex County, Delaware. This is Sharon. Uh, Sharon, thanks, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm calling uh, about your program here. Yeah. I have a history of hernias. I had a hiatal hernia in 2001 and I had surgery on it. Now I have developed an uh, umbilical hernia. Does so that all related? Great question. Hope you feel better. Thank you. Uh, well, it, it may be related and it also may be independent. Umbilical hernias or hernias at the belly button tend to be very common in women, particularly during pregnancy when the intra-abdominal pressure builds up. So it may be something that developed uh, earlier in your life and then just became evident more recently, or it may be something related to your previous operation. Any issues with insurance related to hernias, hernia repairs? No, hernias cause a tremendous amount of lost work, uh, lost wages, and insurance companies believe in the hernia as a general surgery equivalent of primary care. So we are anxious to get people back to work and into good health. Let's grab uh, one more phone call uh, from Baltimore County. This is Paul. Paul, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi. Um, my question is, I had a hernia about four years ago. It was operated on uh, naproscopy, and I'm a bit overweight. Am I more susceptible to having a, a hernia reoccur? Great question. Thank you. Uh, with any increase in strain on the abdominal wall, you may be at increased risk of developing a hernia, which includes a large weight gain. So I would encourage you to try to get some of the weight off to minimize your chance of developing another hernia. Is there anything that you can't do laparoscopically yet that you would like to, that you anticipate being able to, or any of these procedures that, that um, you think might be improved upon in the future? Well, some hernias are very well suited for laparoscopy. For instance, if you have bilateral hernias or hernias in both groins at the same time, it's easier to fix laparoscopically than through traditional open techniques. 
but a very large hernia, a very complex recurrent hernia, may still be best served by traditional techniques. You know, after talking to you, I'm not lifting anything ever again. Uh, but that's probably not the, not the right uh, solution here. I think light weights are a good aerobic <laughs> exercise. And, and in terms of, um, you can certainly strengthen muscles. Can you strengthen the connective tissues that, that turn into the problems here? Uh, a little bit more difficult to address, uh, but certainly by avoiding some toxic medications, taking uh, vitamins perhaps may be of some use, but overall abdominal wall conditioning seems to be the best. Dr. Stephen Kavik, a surgeon with the University of Maryland Medical Center and with the University of Maryland School of Medicine, we do appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.